It's time for part two of the Cadillac North Star Head Stud program we got going on here for this XLR. Let's get started. So for those of you who haven't watched the first video on this, this engine that I have in my 2004 XLR has some issues that's causing some leaks and also it's going to require the engine to come out to fix them. I'm not going to go back together without bulletproofing the engine. In the previous video, you saw that J&J &J Auto Wrecking and Marshallville, Ohio provided us a good engine so that I can work on it and do this job and still drive this car. And I'll have spare parts when it's done. And also, North Star Performance is sponsoring this video also with head studs, and that is the kit we'll be using. I've really wanted to do the head stud video for you guys for a long time, for over a year now, maybe even longer. I just haven't had a vehicle that was worth fixing financially. This one definitely is, and so when it's all done, it will not only increase the value of this car, but it was worth it to begin with. Like I mentioned in the previous video, this is easily fifteen dollars to $20,000 car. A 2000 DeVille is not worth fifteen dollars to $20,000. So it's really a big gamble, is it worth it to fix it? But it is for one of these. Let's head on over to the parts cart. So being that this is the LH2, you really can't do this job in the car. The way that the cams are and the timing chains, it's not easy to just slide the timing chains off the cams. You really have to take the timing cover off and take a whole bunch of stuff apart. As you can see, I have three levels of parts plus another cart of the camshaft sitting over there on a nice soft fabric. There's the cylinder heads down there. I've already prepped them for reassembly and everything. Timing chains, there's lifters, there's rocker arms, valve covers, the intake, some brackets, the water pump. We've got coils, accessory brackets, intake, the timing cover, the cam actuator covers. There's just tons of parts to get this job done. Someone commented, or actually a few people commented that back in the day that someone would do this job for 700 bucks. You can't even buy the parts to do this job for 700 bucks. I don't see how that's possible. I've talked to a few other people about this and they said anybody that can do this for 700 bucks is not welcome to touch my car. And I agreed with that person. They're, they obviously don't know what they're doing. In the previous video, we talked about how the North Star Performance head stud system is patented. So to think that you're going to get a cheaper one or find some cheaper company making them, you're not going to. This is the only company doing it. This was kind of big job to do all this. This is the J&J &J engine with only 32,000 miles on it. And there was absolutely nothing wrong with it. It was clean inside. It was, it was very immaculate and beautiful inside of the engine. There were no leaks anywhere. But when we're done, the head gasket issue will be solved. The leaks, any possible future leaks will be eliminated and I can put this into my car and go on down the road happy without ever worrying about this having an issue in the future. Let's head on over to my tooling table. So here we have a box from Jake at North Star Performance. He included the main studs, which will be in another video. The head studs, some GM sealant to do the uh, sealing job on the bottom. But this is mainly the kit that you get whenever you order the head stud system. You get the studs, you get a drill, a tap, the fixture that aligns everything for you to drill and tap nice and straight, some of the fixture bolts, and this is some Loctite that I have, but he includes some if you order the kit. Before we dive in and start drilling and tapping, I want to show you guys some differences. This is a fixture bolt, but it gives you an idea of how the early North Star's head bolts would look, like 96, 95, 98, 99 in that range. It's a very small, fine threaded bolt. So we won't be using this fixture bolt today because after 2004 range, they started to go to upgraded head bolts, which are the same diameter, but you can see that they have now coarse threads. The reasoning behind that is when you have soft aluminum with a lot of stress of having high torque bolts into it, 
fine threads do not hold up very well on an aluminum block. If there's any kind of corrosion or anything gets in there, it doesn't take much for them to separate, pull the threads, and it just gets worse on down the line, and pretty soon you have a blown head gasket. The head gaskets themselves weren't so much the problem on those earlier North Stars. It's these very fine thread bolts, and they didn't even have much of the threads even holding into the block. It was, that was the poor design there. Now, I also know, being that this is a newer North Star, that they pretty much solved the head gasket problem by now, but not 100%. If you go to any of the XLR forums, there are some people in there that have said, I just blew a head gasket. This wasn't supposed to happen, but it did. I'm going to have to do the stud job on it. So it does still happen, just not as much. And when I get done with this, I want it to not happen, ever. So we've seen what they originally were, and they did upgrade it to these coarse thread bolts, but we're going from this to this as the head stud. Look at the difference, guys. It's like double the diameter almost, in very coarse, deep threads. There is plenty of aluminum material in this block, that you could go even bigger than that if you wanted to. But this is obviously plenty big. This is huge. This is not going to pull out of the block. You could put this into the block and pick up the whole motor with one bolt and it wouldn't. It's just very, very strong. It's also very strong steel. I've also seen a few comments, people saying, when you go from a torque to yield bolt to a non-torque to yield, very strong stud, that goes against the engineering of this engine and you're going to damage the engine. That's a load of crap. This is a Ferrari 360 engine. It is aluminum. And from the factory it has non-torque to yield head studs. Why would a $200,000 car put something in that's going to fail? These are very strong. You don't hear about blowing head gaskets on Ferraris. It's because they know this is the solution to blown head gaskets. Very strong. Very, very powerful. So let me get this one out of the way. I know this system works. I've done this job before. I'm familiar with it and it works very, very well. Just like I mentioned here just a minute ago, when we go to install the heads onto the engine, which will be in the next video, we will no longer be doing degrees and backing off and all this torque to yield stuff. When you put the head studs in, it's just like a 1950s engine. You set it to a certain torque, the torque rich clicks, you're done. No degrees, no nothing. So that's basically the kit. Here's the engine from J&J. &J. We're gonna take a look at that. I have half of them done so you can see what it looks like when it's done and then I'm going to do a few on the other side to show you the process. How does this work? So let's head on over to the engine. So here we have the head studs fully installed. I've gone through and drilled and tapped and done all the holes. You can see I used masking tape to cover up any of the ports or passages so we don't get chips. And there is a lot of chips. If you do this to your car, you're going to be standing in chips. There is tons of metal chips everywhere, a lot. And you're going to see that when we do a few holes here in a minute. But you can see on the bottom of the top two head studs, they have this beveled portion that's part of the stud. And what that does is replaces the dowel pin. These dowels were in there very deep. What I did was just welded a nut to the top of them and used my puller and pulled them out. You cannot put the stud in with the dowel pins in place. You got to pull them so you can get in there and tap and thread and do all that stuff. But now we have all the studs installed. You put the upgraded gasket on, put the head on. It will never blow a head gasket again. Well, I take that back. If you overheat this thing to 300 degrees and drive as far as you can until it locks up, yeah, you might blow your head gasket. That's just insane. Who does that? But under normal circumstances, this will never blow the head gasket again. So this is what it looks like. You can see I have this little rag here to keep chips from getting in the front timing case. 
but I had to take all that stuff out and I will be putting all new timing chain, all new timing guides, tensioners, everything will be brand new. A new rear main seal. Make sure the bottom end is permanently sealed up and with head studs, this will be like a new improved engine. So I'll go ahead and turn this engine around and we'll go ahead and show you guys what's all involved to turn this into this. So here we have the fixture. It has two large holes. These are called the locating holes. This is what's used to locate this fixture exactly off of the old head bolt holes so that you're using the original factory locations. If you don't use that, you could be off center or get them drilled crooked or something like that and then the head won't even go on. This is the key to making this all work. The two working holes you use, one is to drill, it's just a smooth hole to keep your drill straight. The other one is threaded, so once you get the hole drilled to the next larger size, then you just run the tap down in it and that keeps your tap straight and keeps threads clean. Enough talking, let's go ahead and get this going. Okay, now we have it located off of the pre-existing holes. Now I can drill through this smooth bore section here and go ahead and start with the process. Basically what we're going to do if you do this whole bank is you're going to be flip-flopping this thing all the way down, twisting it and turning it, and I'll, I'll show you that as we go along. But now, the first step is start with this hole, and we're going to go ahead and drill it to the proper size with the drill that is supplied in the kit. You can see the drill has a collar at the end here so that you can't go any deeper. You don't want to go too deep and destroy your block. You drill until you get down to this collar, and then you pull it out. You want to drill, go in and out, it's called plunge drilling, it's where you let the chips come out. You don't want to just go straight down without stopping, you'll get balled up. This is definitely dangerous if, and I'm not talking about getting hurt, I'm talking about dangerous for your engine if you're not mechanically inclined. If you don't do this right and you drill it crooked or you get it scarred up or do something wrong, it's very possible that, that you could ruin the block. Then your engine is scrap. So. Either make sure you understand what's going and you have the skills to do this or have someone or pay someone to do it. So I'll go ahead and get started drilling. And I can't go any further. So that's as deep as you can go. That is as deep as you go. Go ahead and blow the hole out. That's one hole, guys. Just one hole worth of chips. We're gonna do this times 10. So we're gonna have a carpet of chips everywhere. So now we've got the first hole drilled. It's time to do the flip-flop process. Now we're going to turn 180 degrees. Put our fixture bolts back in. These fixture bolts don't need to be super tight. I just do a little bit of snug to make sure there's no movement or anything like that. So now we have it placed where we can do two operations now. We can drill the second hole and now tap the first hole. The tap portion of this fixture is now sitting above the first hole we drilled. Let's go ahead and drill the next hole. Always use a little bit of light oil to help drilling and also tapping. You want to use light pressure. You don't want to push hard. It'll just get stuck. It's not a big jump in size. So now we have two holes drilled and this one is already positioned to start tapping. So let's get our tap and I have just a ratchet and a normal socket that I use to tap. We're going to tap all the way down until it stops then back the tap out. If it ever gets tight on you, you want to stop and figure out what's going on. You don't want to break your tap off in the block. That would be bad. And once we go to flip the fixture again, I always like to run the tap back down and get a final one or two turns out of it and clean, have nice clean threads all the way down. 
Here's our tap that's included in the kit. I like to put a little bit of cutting oil, light cutting oil on it. Go ahead and feed it into the fixture. Like I mentioned, it's already pre-tapped into the fixture, so it keeps the tap straight. You can't get it crooked. And this is my World War II ratchet. It's made by Plum. This is a very, very old ratchet. I use it once in a while on something like this. And there it's kind of stopping there. It's getting balled up with chips. We've reached pretty much the bottom. Go ahead and let's back out our tap. You don't want to use a power tool on a tap. I've watched some uh, kind of famous builders on TV and things in the years past and I watched them building things and using a little impact or a drill to run a tap and it's like, oh my goodness. If it were to snap or break, you don't have any way to know if it's getting jammed up or not and cause it to break off in the hole. Clean off the tap, clean out our freshly tapped hole. Now we're going to do flip-flop on the fixture. Again, we're going to be doing this a lot. Go ahead and run my tap back down in this hole. You may not have to run the tap a second time. I just do. That's my personal preference. I've done machining work before and I know that if you don't get it all the way threaded down to the bottom, sometimes that last little bit was what you needed in the first place. You don't want the threads of these studs sticking up above the deck surface. You want them just a little bit below because it won't seat properly if you don't. And there we go, we stopped, we're at the bottom. Nice clean hole now. So now we have the hole tapped. I did the second tap after the fixture's off just to get the final little bit in there. Let's test it out. I did the second tapping because I like to be able to put my studs in without any binding or anything. I like nice clean threads and you can see this goes in all the way down with very minimal effort. I'm not going to install this one yet. I want to get all these holes drilled. But when you do, you'll put Loctite on these and then put them into the hole. So now we know that hole is nice and clean. The threads are also very clean because I was able to put it all the way down by hand. So that's basically what we're going to end up with is a hole like this on all 10 of these. Let's go ahead and get our fixture fixed back onto the block and start doing the tapping up here. Okay, now we've got balled up with chips in the bottom. That's about as far as we can go. Let's go ahead and pull the tap out. Now chips getting into the valley right here doesn't matter. This is not a critical area. That's just an open chamber. Even with the intake installed, you'll just clean that out and blow it out before you put everything together. But you don't want to get chips down in the timing case or in the coolant chambers or anything like that. So those two holes have been tapped. I need to take the fixture off, do my final clean, cleaning pass on the tap there, and then we'll go from there. There we hit bottom. I 
Okay, now we use the original bolt holes to locate for these two holes that we drilled and tapped. Now it's time to drill the two holes we use to locate. We will no longer be using these fixture bolts. We will switch over to the larger ones supplied in the kit. Like this. These are now going to go into the ones we just drilled and tapped. You actually flip the fixture over. So now what we would do is what we just did, we would drill and tap the next two holes. Then we would end up with four holes that are ready for studs. Then we'd move on down the line, like I said, rotating and flipping until you get all ten drilled and tapped ready for the studs. When they're, all the holes are clean and tapped, you just put Loctite on the threads of the studs and install them. Make sure, like I said, that the thread depth is not above the deck. These top two ones here will have the two special studs that are actually, they act as the dowel pins now, just like I showed you a minute ago. Remember not to get those installed down here or somewhere else. They go in the top two corners on each side. Once you get all that done, you clean everything up, pull the tape off, and you start reassembly. You start putting your new head gaskets on, put the heads back on, torque all the nuts that come with it. No longer will it be head bolts, you'll have head nuts and start reassembly, timing chain, and everything else. So that's how this is done. You use this fixture with the fixture bolts and the drill and the tap supplied in the kit, and you work your way down the block until you have all 10 on this side drilled and tapped with nice, clean, straight holes. Being that I've done this before, I had the other side done in about an hour. Plan on a few hours to take your time. If it's, if it's your first time, you want to kind of get the feel for it. You don't want to destroy your block. Don't get in a rush. If you've got an appointment to be to in an hour or two, don't start on this. Just wait. Wait till another day when you can have some time to say, okay, I see how this is working now, and you can watch this video and it'll show you how to do it. But this is how you get the end result of these installed. I would never attempt this job without this fixture. You would literally destroy your block. It doesn't take much of a degree or two off for the studs to be crooked and then the block is ruined. It's literally ruined. So, it's a very good system, it's very easy to use, and the end results are literally bulletproofing your engine. Some people mentioned in the comments that Jake at North Star Performance has tunes and cams and things going on for the North Stars, and he does, but not for the LH2s, not yet. He's working on them, it's currently in, in, the, in progress. But at the current moment, there is no tune or no special cams or anything I can put on my LH2. And I really don't want to mess with that anyways. I just want to make it bulletproof and enjoy the car. So now you know by watching this video, when somebody says, I studded my North Star, you know exactly the process they went through, what the studs look like when they're installed, how they got them to that point, and how it's going to keep this engine from blowing a head gasket ever again. And like I said, with the upgraded head bolts that the factory used, it does diminish the probability of having a blown head gasket, but it does not fully eliminate it. There are still people getting blown head gaskets on these. With Jake's North Star Performance head studs, it does fully eliminate that problem. I want to thank J&J &J Auto Wrecking again for sending us this engine so that we can do this procedure and show you guys how it looks. And thanks again to Jake from North Star Performance for setting us up with these studs and, and sponsoring this video. In the next video, we'll be re reassembling this engine and then talking about the main studs. Some of you mentioned in the comments that you have to align the bore once you do main studs, and that's inaccurate on this engine because we're not drilling and tapping. We're not changing the locations of the holes. We're just taking the bolts out and threading in a stud using the same factory bolts, the same factory locations. It's clamping on to the lower case the same as a bolt does. Nothing's changing.
If you're curious what kind of tools we use to pull this engine apart or do any of the work in the shop, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and we really appreciate it. If you want to keep up on what we've got going on with this or upcoming videos on the bus or all kinds of cool videos that are coming down the pike, make sure to hit the subscribe button because you don't want to miss out. Thanks for watching.